the game. It's a red skin. Griffin to finish his, his hands with a kick, being as it's hard to find Zalao with the hands, finish a combination with a kick, and it was there. Yeah, Jordan's doing a good job of that. He's thrown that same combination several times now. Zalao coming alive with the flying knee. Yeah, he likes that jumping knee, Mike. I like it as well. Ha! Well, it's a good read, too, because he's throwing one, one, two, and a lot of times guys will duck their head to dodge the, the uppercut or the hook, and the knee came. So it was a good read. Let's see if that continues to work for him as the fight moves on. Griffin said of Zalal, he kind of fights how I used to fight, doesn't cut a lot of weight, so Griffin felt like he would have the strength and size advantage tonight. Griffin's been leaning a lot on that famed UFC PI here in Vegas for his nutrition and his weight cutting. What's really helping Griffin right here to not get taken down is you see how his head position is on the underhook side of Yusuf Zalal. That allows him to keep just enough space. And now from here, you see how he moved his head to the si same side. Now Zalal has the head position here, so that gives him even, he can get even tighter on the body lock here of Griffin because of that head position. And there, that's what allows it. So Griffin's gotta get that head position back, keep that whizzer and keep fighting the underhook on the right side there with his right arm. There's the underhook that he's looking for. There's the head position. But this is good for Jordan because think about it, Zalal, you know, he's a guy that does like to move. He is a kickboxer and this type of fight will wear out the muscles, it will reduce the stamina that he has. And then coming into the second round, we might see a more labored movements from Zalal. Yeah, very smart. Best being of Griffin to, to come with this approach early. All right, back in 60 seconds. Stay with us. Good run. Come on, take a seat. Beat him up on the inside. UFC Fight Island on Yaz Island kicks off headliner between teammates Gilbert Burns and the champion Kamaru Usman. It's available only on pay-per-view, and it can only be purchased through ESPN+. Plus. You know, All right, round two here, Mike, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, John, I'm just going to say it's pretty interesting there listening to the corners because they both identified the same thing. Jordan Griffin's corner saying, listen, he's going straight back, so when you go forward, do the punchy charge and finish with a kick, and then on the flip side, Zalal's like, well, he's going to chase you down, he's going to drive you backwards, so don't go back in a straight line. But that doesn't matter right now. And there's that patented Zalal knee, and he is being a lot more aggressive this round per that Montoya imperative after round one. Yeah, both guys having a bit of fun here. Some smiles on the face. Started to throw down a little bit. And you heard in Griffin's corner, he asked for him to make sure and keep the combinations coming and fire the kick after because Zalal leans back. That's what's, that's why you keep seeing that left high kick come up of Griffin. It's a good read. And good job by the corner. There it is. Nice body oh, shot, that hurt. He felt that one. Sort of a desperation shot there by Griffin. Yeah, and sometimes, you know, when the wind gets taken out of you like that, you want to get it down to the floor, get hold of your man, and just take a few deep breaths, but <laughs> that's not happening right now. Well, what I loved about that from Zalal is he sees that Griffin was getting tired in the first round, so what does he do in the second round? He starts attacking the body. Griffin doing the right thing. He beat the legs there, and so now he's going to have that back position there. Throws the hook in. I don't know if he's got both in or not. Yes, there they are. Both are in now. And yeah, that was good hustle from Jordan. Because it wasn't looking good there. He looked hurt. But uh, he's rallied and now he's in control of this fight. Again, just like round one, so Lau's got to be careful. And Michael, I mean, I know for me, it takes a lot of energy to hang on someone's back in this position over time. Uh, so how much energy is Griffin using here? The second hook in the gym. Yeah, yeah. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. Well, he looked pretty fatigued on the stool after round one. Yeah, you, you're right. He was taking some I, big deep breaths. I just know when you're hanging on the back like that, it's generally because you need to be a hold of this person. And like right now, we're seeing Zalal on the turning the tables. On the flip side, though, Doug, you are also carrying your opponent's body weight. There's right. that body shot again. He sees it. He sees a weakness there. And Griffin is looking a little labored. The punches are slowing down a little bit. Oh, nice jab, yeah. 
Well, as the law this week acknowledged UFC featherweight contender Dan Ige, who beat Jordan Griffin earlier in his career, he said, Ige wasn't able to get Griffin out of there. If I can do that, that would certainly be a statement to my 100. We are. Good to see an awesome third round. Can't help but notice the youthful spirit of this 23-year-old Yusuf Zalal lost his older brother Hamza when he was 18 or 19 years old and thankful that his wife Kat was able to help him through what, what was a very dark time in his life and he competes onward in Hamza's memory here tonight as he tries to make it a 2-0 start in the UFC. Jordan's doing the same thing pretty much every round. You know, he has these punching charges, nice head kick attempts, and a good combination. But he's got to do more than that. He, he rushes across from the octagon, throws the combination, finishes with the head kick, and then kind of resets. But look at this. There we go. Wow. Big shots. Yeah, right now Griffin's like, I don't care, punch me. I'm a little bit tired. Let me just get my air back, and then I'll get back to work in a second. And Zala's looking very fresh, very fast. I mean, this third round looks like if he can keep this pace, yeah, but never listen, know what's going to happen. Elbows, knees, multiple shots to the face. It doesn't matter how tough you are. That's going to open up cuts. It's going to put you on the floor, and it might put you unconscious. This is what Griffin needs to be doing the whole fight. The second he goes first, he turns this fight around for him. Don't that use toes. was a very well-needed takedown. Nicely done. But now he's got three minutes to get a finish because you've got to think he's down push. two rounds here. Herb Dean saying about the toes there in the fence. Yep. Yes. Jordan's been looking for this choke the entire fight, whether it be standing up against the fence or on the ground. But... He's really got to make the most of this position because if Zalal gets back to the feet and lets go with the hands again, nice done, nicely done, good transition. And Griffin wisely closes the distance there so as not to allow Zalal back to his feet. Now he's upright. Three minutes to go in this third and final round. Anybody's fight. And I think after this takedown attempt, we're going to see Griffin slow down a lot. Zalal's going to be looking to keep piecing it up. He just looks a lot fresher on the feet right now when they're striking. Zalal has outstruck Griffin unofficially 57 to 17 on these significant strikes. Adding to that total here. You can see that Griffin is tired here. And you've got to remember, you know, he took this fight on about 10 days' notice. Less than two weeks. Oh, Zalal did, pardon me, sorry, I got that wrong. Here's a big needy takedown off for Griffin. And this looks close. I think he's got his hands together. It was a super good shot. I love that attempt that he took, and he's got his hands locked, so he can finish this. He just got to get some energy up. And right now, Zalal doing a good job. He's got that wizard. He's going to want to get his head in there so that he can create a little bit of space and use that underhook there. He's going to want to create space here. He doesn't want to stay in this clinch with, with Griffin. I mean, look at the striking differential here. 55. 91, 24 of 66. And those are all just to the head right there. There's another one of those knees got through. Nice shot by Griffin again. Zalal doing a good job with that wizard. The wizard is that overhook on that arm. That's how you stuff a double leg very effectively. It just gives you a little bit of time to get back to your feet. And he's doing a good job with that wizard. I gotta say, Zalal is looking so good here. I mean, Jordan's putting him under a lot of pressure. He's fighting hard, he's getting a lot of takedown. Well, so far, Zalal is defending all the chokes. He's got back to his feet and on the feet when they're separated. Right. He's looking so good. And judges don't score defense per se, right? But he has stuffed six of the eight takedowns thus far, and that has been a huge part of the game plan of Jordan Griffin, or so it would appear, so. Oh yeah, absolutely. Jordan's put a tremendous amount of pressure on him. You know, he's pushed him up against the fence. He has secured a lot of takedowns. He's controlled. He's taken the back on more than one occasion. Threatened with the rear naked choke on multiple times. So it all depends how the judges are watching this. This, I don't understand why Zalal believes he needs a takedown here. Um, but he's going for it. He might get it here. But he's had the most success just keeping uh, keeping it on the feet and just continuing to touch and pepper at Griffin. Yo, know, Griffin did the right thing there. He spread the legs almost like he was doing a split. And when you do that, it separates the hand grip. Beautiful knee again. The knees are so deadly from this guy. There is again, now an elbow from Zalal. Griffin does not seem to fear the power coming back his way, but Zalal, a clinician late with his hands and his knees. Yeah, Griffin has a chin, that's for sure. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, finish. 
All right, down the stretch we come. Final seconds of this one at featherweight. I mean, if I'm Zalaw, I'm trying to finish this, this fight on my feet going crazy. All right, competitive 15 minutes turned in by Yusuf Zalal and Jordan Griffin. Nope. Oh, there we go. What's up? <laughs> Congratulations on the win. First of all, just give us your reaction to the to the fight and the performance itself. Man, I feel like every time I fight, I, I'm not never happy with my performance, but that's why I have my coaches, man. It's like every time I fight, I don't know why. It's it's I think it's a curse that follows me. Even when I go knock somebody out or do something like that, I never feel satisfied. So I don't know what it is, but man, I, I go back and get to see it's it, it's very good, man. You know, you're too annoying the UFC now, but I still not very satisfied with this performance. Could that be a good thing though? Because it means you'll want to keep growing, keep growing, right? Oh, definitely, man. I'm I'm 23, man. You know, it's like you don't see a lot of 23 years old staying active, taking short notices. I don't have to take this short notice, you know, especially against a guy who's 18 and seven. His two first fights are against ranked featherweights, you know. So for me to go out there and really just just to step up and really put show my game and and my knowledge of this mixed martial arts, it's 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 a good thing. At what point during the fight did you start it to feel it was going your way? I'd, I'd say like second round, mid second round, I, I kind of started really feeling the momentum and started touching him a little bit, and I felt him like he was not really gonna dodge my punches or none of that, but. As soon as I started landing my right hand, I figured out he's... And I think he was very confused in my uh, switching stances. I, I kept hearing his coaches yelling, he's right-handed, he's right-handed, he's right-handed. So that's why I really wanted to focus on switching stances and doing all that stuff. And that's why I have one of the best coaches in, in the whole world. And for me to keep me in there. Did you start to feel him tire in round three? Oh man, oh definitely, trust me. And my coaches were screaming at me the whole time, you know, he was like, he's tired and I hear him breathing. And I don't know if you guys watched me, anybody that fights me, it's not it's not an easy cardio day. You know, it's, I don't care if even if you're winning, it's it's not gonna be fun for you fighting me. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little African Moroccan kid, man. That's that's all we do, man. I'm skinny, I'm not, I'm not the power guy, I'm not the, the fast guy, but I'm coming for those lungs, I'll tell you that. So you said, you know, you beat this guy, great experience for you. What do you want next? What's the next move for you after this fight? I really don't care, man. I was like, I know me and my coaches are talking about band weight for us. So I'm not, like I said, man, I'm a skinny guy. You know, I'm not, I'm not that, that really big weight. Like you, you see me be like, oh, wow, look at his power. None of that. You know, you just don't, you know. But for me, I really think about that band weight division. I can really go out there and really do some noise down there. Congratulations. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Going into that third round, how did you have it scored at that point? Did you feel it was 1-1? And what did your coach say to you maybe going into that third round? Did they put a little sense of urgency and that you need something? <laughs> oh, yeah. My coach is right there. He looked at me down in the eyes, and he's like, read. And then we got to finish. Like, let's go. We, this is the round. We can't let it go. And I am I feel like I've been there before, you know, experienced it in my LFA, big fights in LFA. When my coach really sit down and really be like, we gotta go, man. Like this is not like you can't let it in the hands of judges, you know. So that was that was a very good for, thing for me. But I'm just mad that I really didn't put it all, like finish it, like just end it. So that was that's the thing that's gonna bother me forever. Talk a little bit about the game plan. It definitely looked like you were trying to control the center of the octagon and trying to push him up against the cage. T tell us a little bit about what the game plan was coming. Oh up. God, I I got I got screamed at the last fight because I couldn't control the fight in the middle so my goal and we really we only had like when we one week and a half two weeks to really focus on controlling the middle my last fight i was like a fucking pokemon i was like <laughs> all over the place so for me to go in the middle and really control so that was that was the main thing we focused on and we really just slow down his legs like because i know he just loves to explode so for me to chop down the legs a little bit that was the game plan going in and, and for, uh, last one for me, your next fight, you took this one at featherweight, but you keep mentioning bantamweight. Is bantamweight where you'd rather live? Yes, sir. It's, it's not going to be fun, but I was like, I'd rather, I'd rather fight guys like 5'4 and, and then fight guys who's walking in 190, 180 fight day. So, like I said, man, I'm not, I'm not that big. So, like, let's give me some 35ers, dog. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you.